right, uh, my name's Alan. I'm a sophomore at the college. Um, so, uh, humanism. Um, recently, in the last season of Family Guy, you had... No, oh. Humanism. It wasn't a joke, just in, in, re in relation to humanism. Recently, in the last season of Family Guy, you had Rush Limbaugh as a guest on your show. Um, obviously, not obviously, or if you've listened to what he has to say, he obviously has some things to say that I have to imagine you wouldn't agree with. Um, my question is, not so much was he hard to work with, because I have to imagine he's very professional about what he does, he is a professional, but in, to bring yourself to a place where you felt comfortable working with Rush Limbaugh, what was that like? Did, did it take some convincing from other people to you? Were you well, excited to work with him? You know, it, it, was, it, was, it was something that made us all a little nervous and made us all a little bit fearful, which I think is always a good thing. Um, he had done a voice uh, as himself in this first Star Wars episode, Blue Harvest, that we did. Uh, and he was, you know, we talked to him on the phone, and he was very cordial and, and very, you know, he, he, was, he was really a, 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 a very good actor. <laughs> which I thought was interesting. Um, <clears throat> he, was, he was a very good actor. And, and he, uh, you know, we've had professional... Hollywood actors who've come in to do uh, the show who have not given us reads that were as good as what Rush Limbaugh gave us. Yeah, I, Make of that what you will. But, um, but he himself was, um, uh, you know, it, it was odd because like he, he was, I disagree with just about everything the guy has ever said. But we got on just fine. I mean, like he, you know, he, we, we had a fun time in the booth. You know, we, we were, we, we didn't talk politics. But you know, he's, he's, I don't know. You know, you, you look, you, you look at George Bush, I guess, as an example. Like he, you know, he's a guy you'd want to have a beer with. You know what? Yeah, he is a guy you'd want to have a beer with. You wouldn't want him to do anything else. <laughs> but you'd probably want to have a beer with him. Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd have a beer with Rush. Um, but you know, I, 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 I still don't. I don't like <clears throat> what that uh, voice in, uh, in, in, in the media, not, I'm not just talking about him, I'm talking about that corner of the media puts forth and what they present and how they present it and how persuasive they are. I don't like that. But, uh, you know, it, it is a good example of the fact that we, you know, these are two human beings in a room together. They can be civil. They can interact with each other, uh, and it, it, it wasn't, it was fairly stress-free. Um, I've had worse, I have had worse uh, dealings with performers than Rush Limbaugh, let me tell you that. He was, he was, I mean, if I'm being completely objective here, he, he was as cordial and as friendly and as kind to me as anyone I've ever had in that booth. Um, huh, I disagree much. with, I can't stress that enough, I disagree with. <laughs> Everything that he uh, <clears throat> stands for politically, but you know, what can I say? We had fun. All right, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Jane. I'm just a huge fan of yours, and I have a really silly question. Uh, what I've heard about your experience on September 11, and what kind of joke of the universe was that? Because if we lost you, I don't know what we're going to do. I'm trying to place your dialect, and for the life of me, I, 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 are you from where Balky was from? Where, where, where? Um, what? Oh, yeah, you're too young to get that reference. No, no, I'm from Russia, but I'm oh, Okay, just, there we go. Oh, yeah, now so I feel, now I feel need, foolish. If you ever need anyone in your show who has an accent like mine, just give me a hand. <laughs> you're, 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 you're asking about way, it, what, how, how I process that that event and, and am well, I... Well, yeah, what do you think, like, it, was it meant to be like that or... Because, like, we don't believe in God and we think universe kind of... But still, we think universe has some kind of plan for us or what... what yeah, what we, are, we, are, we are significance junkies. It's again, as is, I, I keep quoting Sagan, but, you know, he's got... He's quotable. Um, we're significance junkies. We love to attach meaning to everything, even yeah. when there is no meaning, even when there is even when something is just a coincidence. And that's an example of something that really was a coincidence. Um, I've missed a lot of flights for being late. I'm a chronically late person. This was one of many flights that I've missed for being late. 
And it was more fortunate that I missed this than, than the others. Uh, on every flight that takes off, I got to figure somebody's missing that flight. Not only that, but, you know, that, that morning when I walked to the car to go to the airport, how do I know that if I hadn't crossed the street five minutes later, I would have been hit by a car? You know, if you bundle all that stuff together, statistically, it doesn't seem all that um, significant. It just seems more like something that really is a coincidence. Hi, I'm Colin. I'm a sophomore in the class. Uh, I remember you made a reference to the image of Muhammad earlier. I was curious with the South Park episode that depicted the Family Guy writing staff as a group of uh, sea cows. Was there, was your writing staff at all mad about that? Did they talk to you at all before airing that? No, 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 that, no, that's, that's, I mean, I don't know, if you dish it out, you gotta take it. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I thought, I thought they were, they're, they're, Point, their satirical point about the setups to our gags was actually pretty right on the money. <laughs> we, were, we were getting kind of lazy with our, you know, like just kind of going down this windy road to like, and I, that's legit. I, I, there, that's, that was, um, no, I thought that was a funny episode. And, and you know, I, if, if, you're, if you're making fun of something in the context of your show, no, all, I mean, all bets are off. They can do whatever they want. I, 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 I thought it was great. Um, you know, their conduct in the press when they themselves are speaking is maybe less than exemplary. Um, could be a, a little classier in, in my book, but, uh, but that episode I thought was, was hilarious. And, and, you know, the only, the only thing that I would, I would say in, in, uh, correctively is that, is that the cutaways, ironically, are the hardest things to write. Um, to write comedy that is, <clears throat> that is, that is story-based, that kind of just follows the, the storyline that you're, that you're, uh, that you're you know, the story that you're telling is a lot easier because you're kind of working off the same skeleton. Um, to write cutaways and flashbacks, it's like you're doing sketch comedy, which really is a lot harder uh, because you're, you're starting from the ground up every f four minutes or so. You have to have a premise, and a microcosm of a beginning, middle, and end setup, joke, payoff. Uh, so that would be the only thing that I would take issue with, is, is that the, the cutaways are actually... Comedy that is unrelated to the story is the hardest thing, not the easiest thing to write. Um, in the same way that, you know, for Gary Larson, he had a really tough job when he did The Far Side because he couldn't rely on the same characters every week. He had to come up with a brand new idea every week. Um, so, you know... Again, that, that would be the only corrective statement I would make, but I thought, I th I thought that episode was funny. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I, in line, I was like thinking of like a really, really cool humanist segue, and I think I got one. Right. So um, you were talking about, you know, as humans, we should, you know, push ourselves like creatively, scientifically. Um, are there any times as an artist where, you know, you see something like, Charlie Sheen or Kesha, and you're like, you know, that's, that's just too easy, you know, it's like it's been done, it's too obvious, and you have to walk away, or, or is anything go? I don't know, I'm thinking of changing the S in my first name to a dollar sign. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's, that's a legitimate question, yeah, there's, there, and there was a lot of talk about that before the Charlie Sheen roast, um, that is this just... I mean, is this just like shooting ducks in a barrel? <laughs> but, you know, they're fun. The roasts are so much fun. They're, they're like, it's, it's like a, it's like a one-day gig. You go, you do it, and it's, it's really, it's like a vacation. Like, they're just fun. And after, you know, it's like working 364 weeks, uh, you know, or, or 360 days out of the year, um, it, it's, 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 it's fun. It's just like a night off. I mean, you go and you just hang around a bunch of funny people. You make a bunch of jokes. The, the person is in on it. Um, he was great. Charlie was great. I mean, he just, he sat there and was actually enjoying the comedy in a detached way. <clears throat> um, it, it is a legitimate, it is a legitimate question, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, for, for every joke about Benjamin Disraeli, you know, there's a Kesha joke. 
I, 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 think this, so much. I think there's room for all. Hi, great to see you. My name's Kim Solomon. I didn't expect to think so much on a Saturday night, but um, <laughs> for fear that you won't listen to me because I went to an undergrad that you might consider a safety school, I was at, in Dartmouth College's multi-faith council, and a big emphasis on every single meeting was to take every single religion, or we had atheists and humanists, but to take everyone's ideas as equally valid. And jokes, which you that's your thing, were really not accepted. It was Oh, this really, sounds like a terrible place. I mean it was it was it was P, it was a great way to see what other people thought, but it was like, I guess you could say way more PC. And since it's been about twenty seconds, I'll let you know that I do go to Harvard Law School and we'd love you to come on November eleventh to speak <laughs> about the WGA negotiations, which I think is related to humanism. So let us know. You can answer them in what I'm not that want. smart, lady. <laughs> I'd be a disappointment. Um, yeah, that's not. You, you don't have a question, do you? You're just asking me to come. Do, come, come do your lawyer, your lawyer thing. You're just asking me to come on on the 11th. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, again, I, I go back to the, the example of, of religious church-going friends that I have who I can make whatever joke I want. I can crack jokes about Jesus. I can, I can say whatever I want, and they're fine because they're comfortable, they're secure in, in their beliefs, and, uh, and they almost, they, 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 a lot of them view it as a as a healthy challenge, you know, as, as a way to kind of stay sharp. And it goes both ways. I mean, like, I get plenty of jokes thrown my way about how I'm going to, you know, burn in hell for all eternity. So it's, it's, uh, that, that to me is the healthiest way you can go about it. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, no, all, all, it should be open season. I mean, if you're, if you are having to censor yourself in a place like that, that should be very suspect. And you, you should talk to your superiors about that. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Thank you very much, you guys. You guys have been great. Thanks. Uh, Stephen Fry, I think you were right. Authentic genius indeed. Uh, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate seeing you. We'll see you here again on December 1st for Jody Picot with John Grant. That's going to be a great show. Uh, and join us uh, on Sundays or in our student communities. So thank you very, very much, everybody.